Hey guys, hello again and welcome back to my channel. Now I have a couple of laptops here. This one here on my right, you guys have seen this one many times. It's the Galago Pro, no surprise there. But the one here on my left, this guy right here, is making its debut on my channel today. This is the Pinebook Pro, something that I've been messing around with in preparation for a review that I'm working on. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel so you'll be the first to see that review when I have it done. But while I was checking this out, I was looking into the process of what it takes to install a different distribution or even to just reinstall the one that it came with. And I figured I would make a quick detour to create a video to show you guys the process. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here I am on my Galago Pro. I'm going to go ahead and start the process here. Now what we're going to do is use Etcher to create basically a bootable SD card. So I guess I should have already mentioned you'll need that. At least 8 gigabytes. And the reason why I'm actually using the Galago Pro for this is because I haven't been able to get app images to work on the Pinebook Pro yet. Now I haven't had a chance to really look into why, but I have this laptop available. I may as well use it. So what you're going to want to do is open up the browser. I'll bring up mine. And I have three different tabs available right here. I have a tab for downloading the Manjaro version right here. And then I also have a, the second tab right here, which is where you can go to download the Debian version, which is the one that it comes with, basically the factory image. Now here I have a couple of download links, and this is for the Pinebook Pro. So if I was going to want to reinstall the Debian version, then this one right here is the one that I would go with. It comes in a .img file. Similarly, the Manjaro version, if I was to click this download button, I will also get an IMG file. So basically the first step is to download the image file for the distribution that you want to run on your Pinebook. Now what you'll want to do is also download Etcher if you don't already have it. Now one thing I want to mention really quick is that the project has actually created a custom version of Etcher that is built specifically to create SD cards for use on the Pinebook. But I was unable to get it to work and I've tried everything. It has missing dependencies and even if you install those missing dependencies, it doesn't work. So I'm not sure if they have just run into a bug and they need to fix it or if the project is dead. So I'm going to show you how to do that with plain old Etcher, the same version that we've used on this channel before. So this website here is actually from etcher.io. It will redirect you. And this utility is available for various operating systems, Mac OS, Windows, and of course, Linux. You just simply hit the download button, which I will do right now. Click Save File, and then click OK. It's a small file, so it should be done pretty quick. In fact, it's already done. And now at this point, you should have two download files. So if I open up my file manager, you can see that I have two files right here. I have Etcher, and then I also have the image file. This is the Debian version right here. So what I'm going to do is right click the Etcher download right here and click extract here. That should happen quick because you know it's a small file. And if I go in there, I'll right click that file right there, the app image, go to permissions and make sure that allow executing file as program is checked. And it is. So I'll go ahead and close it. I should be able to simply double click on it. And then you should see this screen right here. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and put the SD card into my computer. Now notice the center one did change right here. Of course, it'll probably say something different for you. But now what I'm going to want to do is select image. So I'll click on that. 
I'll click on the Downloads directory. And then I'm going to click on the image file that I downloaded and click Open. So now we have our image selected, our SD card selected. We should be good to go. Just make sure that the SD card that is selected here is actually the one you want to use because this is a destructive process that will erase everything on the SD card. So with that out of the way, let's click Flash. And you might get prompted for your root or sudo password as I am right here. All right, we should be good to go. As you can see, it is flashing, so I'll go ahead and let this finish and then I'll be right back. Okay, so it's done and now it's going to validate that it was written correctly. And there we go, we're all set. So if all you wanna do is run a different distribution installation off an SD card, then that's it. You don't need to go through the rest of this video because you can simply run the distribution off of the SD card and that'll work just fine. Might be a little slower, but you can definitely do it. Now, if you want to replace the internal eMMC installation, then go ahead and finish the rest of the video because I'm going to show you the process right now. As a little spoiler though, that is a little redundant when it comes to the process, but you'll see what I mean in a moment. Now it probably goes without saying, but if you do plan on replacing the distribution installed internally, I do recommend that you run it from the SD card first to make sure that it works properly. Definitely make sure that you connect to wireless and make sure that that's stable on the distribution you want to install. And then if everything checks out, then go ahead and install it. But I wanted to give you that disclaimer because you may run into wireless issues. You just want to be careful. So let's go ahead and check out the process of replacing the distribution installed on the eMMC. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the process of overwriting the eMMC, basically the internal hard drive of the Pinebook, in a case where you want to either install a different distribution or reinstall the one that it came with. Now, first of all, you want to boot from the SD card in order to reflash the eMMC. And it doesn't matter if you boot from the Manjaro image or the Debian image, you want to make sure that you are running off the SD card. Basically, if we want to reflash eMMC, we can't be using eMMC. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that you are connected to the internet. So I'll go ahead and activate mine now. Select your wireless network, and then put in the password. Okay, so we are up. So now what you'll do is just open up a web browser, and then you go to the website for whatever distribution you want to run where the download file is located. I'll have a link for a few of them in the show notes below. And what you're going to do is download that image file, which might seem a little redundant because you would have downloaded the image file or some image file to flash to the SD card to boot off the SD card. And now while you're running off of the SD card, you're essentially downloading another image file, and then you're going to flash that to the eMMC. We can't actually flash the SD card as it is directly to the eMMC, because while that may work, that's currently in use. So we're going to want to download the SD card image and then flash that to the eMMC, so that's what I'll do. So in my case, I want to restore the Debian version so that's what I'm going to download here. So I'm going to download the Pinebook Pro version right here. I'm going to save it, click OK, and then I'll wait for that to download. All right, so it looks like it's done. Shouldn't need the browser anymore. So now I'm going to open up a terminal. 
and then we go into our downloads directory and if I list the storage we should have a download file right here whichever one you decided to go with so I'm going to extract this I'll use the onxz command I'll wait for that to finish so that took a little bit of time, but we're ready to continue on. So what we're going to want to do right now is make sure that the internal eMMC is not mounted. If it is, it might cause the process to fail. It's still possible for the process to work just fine, even if it is mounted, but we definitely don't want to take any chances. So what we can do is run lsblk. And that's going to list out the storage volumes and their partitions. Now notice that one of them here in the output has a mount point. It's set to a forward slash, which if you know the Linux file system, then you already know that's the root file system. So that automatically means that's not the one that we want to work with. It's possible on your end you might see that there are other storage volumes that are mounted. If there are, you definitely want to unmount those. So if that's something that you have to do, then you can run this. sudo umount slash dev slash mmc blk. And then if partition one was mounted, you would just do p1 or p2, for example. But in my case, I don't have to do any of that because neither of those are mounted. You essentially want to make sure they're not mounted. That's all you really have to do. Go ahead and back that out. Now in my case, we can see that the internal eMMC is MMC BLK2. The reason that I know that is because MMC BLK1, again, has the root file system. We booted off the SD card, not the eMMC. So therefore, the one that is mounted at the root file system, which in this case is the last one, is the SD card that we inserted into the side of the computer. So basically, our target is going to be MMC BLK2 in this case. You just want to make sure. So now what we're going to do is sudo dd if, which stands for input file, equals and then I'm in the downloads directory, so I should be able to do P for Pinebook and press tab. It's going to auto-complete that for me. Next, we will do OF for output file equals slash dev slash MMC BLK, in my case, 2. Now, you notice that in my case, there are two partitions here. We're going to ignore that. We're just going to do MMC BLK 2. We want to basically use DD to overwrite the entire disk, not just a partition. So we're going to omit P1 and P2 and just target MMC BLK2. I'll go ahead and press enter. And it's not showing us any output. It should be running. We'll just go ahead and let it finish. It could take a bit of time for this to complete. All right, so it looks like everything has finished copying. So what I recommend you do right now is just shut down your Pinebook. And then once it's shut down, go ahead and remove the SD card and then turn it back on. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So that's a good sign. And here I am at the login screen for the Debian edition. If it restarts one or more times before it gets to this point, that's perfectly normal. It does need to resize the file system. But now that we are back to the factory default image, we can log in with the username rock and the password rock. And here we go. We have a successful installation of the Debian edition in my case or whatever version you decided to go along with. So there you go. That was my tutorial on preparing an SD card for use on the Pinebook and also replacing the internal distribution as well. I hope that was helpful for you guys. And again, 
Make sure you subscribe. The review for this laptop is coming very soon, and I'll see you there as soon as I have it uploaded.